Sometimes I don't know why the universe picks on me. It's been picking on me for a long time before I have become Morpheus in my transformation. I want to bring to you an individual. You know who he is. It's Leon C. A.K.A. Morpheus. And if you don't know what you listen to right now, you are listening to the Academy of Wildman. This audio is going to offend a few of you. So therefore, I am going to tell you now to leave the room because you just may not be able to handle it. Now what I have to talk about is based on a <laughs> psychology that I have studied. And you'd be like, okay, what psychology of this have you studied? Well, let's just say human activity. Okay. And I understand the power of language as well. The power of language is a very amazing thing when you uh, think about the average person. There are things that we say when we encounter each other that's common that we um, may agree on. And what, what I mean is there's too many common languages such as hello, good morning, how are you doing, how was your day, the weather is cold, what's it going to be like today, you know, let's get her done. <laughs> there's multiple things that you say to somebody. There are some people who say, well, another day, another dollar, you know, common things that you may hear, right? I'm just making it, taking it one day at a time. And oftentimes it's just, as I like to always say, surface water, meaning shallow water sort of communications that can or cannot mean anything, but most times it don't mean much. It doesn't amount to uh, <laughs> anything the in-depth of the individual. So a lot of people innocent and not have the ability to say certain things that I'm going to bring to you. Now you saw the title, the beta languages. There are things that you say that identifies you as a beta. That is a beta male. And you can say blue pill or blue pill female or a blue pill dude. Now, don't misunderstand when I'm telling you this because I know alpha, I know red pill men who talk like this, but they do it just unconsciously. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you don't need to be offended about what I say because I, I listen and I hear what you guys say all the time. So if you choose to keep using these words, that doesn't mean that you per se is a beta because it goes by action than it is words. Okay. Because sometimes somebody, some, you have a conversation with the person and it's just a conversation. I understand it and I get that. All right. Morpheus respects that avenue of ourselves. Okay. So you are still pretty much a red pill. You are a masculine male, but you are using a language that is only used to convey to the public people. You got it? That people can relate to. People can, people have the ability to receive your message. So it's no different than uh, generalizing a people or generalizing a certain activity. Within that group, there's always going to be the exceptions, the unicorns, and uh, the minority who's different basically like not all men are the same and all, not all women are the same which is true but this is for the true betas this is for men not only in their words but in their activities they are blue pill <laughs> so they have a language and a conversation that they talk about on a day to day basis 
And one of the major things, one of the main things that uh, a blue pill beta would say, and again, some of you red pill might say the same thing, but it may not comply to you. All right. When it comes to family, let's get something straight. What I have learned is there's three levels. There are three languages that a man will call his mom. And uh, depending on that man's mind and his lifestyle, he's going to call her certain things. And it means something to me. It does as well as Morpheus. And so here are the three languages that people call depending on what country you're in. In the rest of our civilization, it will be either it will be mother, mom or mama. You got it? The basic common um, introduction of the man's mother. Okay. And there's levels to it as well. And I'm a bridge in women with this where I can pretty much show you the distinct factors in between. And why you should watch what you say. If you read pill and use words to communicate, that's that's uh, understandable. We comprehend this. But there are people who don't. But it shows you where they come from. And then when I study these guys, I hang out with them. We go places, go bowling, right? Shoot some pool, go golfing every now and then. And I hear them talk and they have a conversation with their... <laughs> With their mother, right? And I look at their lifestyle. Most times, both of them go hand in hand. So here's the thing. And again, I told you I might rub many of you wrong, so there's no need to debate. I already told you it's going to be crazy anyway. All right. And however you feel, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. You got to understand that Morpheus is alpha red pill. What you feel like, what you think like, I don't care. Save your comment for someone else who's soft with you. I'm not. I keep it real over here. The levels is this. Mother to me is a very respectable description of, again, your mom. Of the woman, the female who brought you into existence or combined herself with the male species to bring you into existence okay this is the this is the matriarch of the family where it's a respectable as what you could say title of this woman who is in your life so mother is more of a respectable approach and it has a an honorable ring and a disconnect from the man and this woman that brought him into existence. Respectable mean you're holding your own. You got your own place. You got your own. Uh, you're providing for yourself. You're not holding her hands or still sucking on her in order to provide to in order to survive. She's not suckling you like she used to. So they, hey, mother, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine, son. Hi, mom. Good morning, mom. How are you doing? I love you, mom. Which is, of course, I'm going to get to that in a moment. But those will be common as a red pill guy myself. That's what something I would use. If I'm not going to call a mother, be like, hey, this is my mom. How you doing, mom? Good morning, mom. Yeah, my mom was on the phone. Or my mother was on the phone. Got it? Because there's a disconnect there where I respect her as the woman who brought me to existence, but I'm not holding on to her hand because I'm a man. You got what I mean? But we're gonna get there in this, we're gonna get there in a moment. So mom, right, is like the second stage of the camaraderie between you and this female who brought you into existence. Mom will be more common, will be more um you would say comfortable to use and it's again it's more respectable it's easier to look at that as okay i'm this man i got my own i have my own house i have my own family but i still don't i'm not feeling or thinking as if i am a child all right 
So I'm not going to sit up here and approach her like I did when I was two years old or 12 years old. You got it? When I was eight years old. So I'm going to make a know that, yeah, I respect her. Say, so yes, mom, I do love you because that's my mom. Because she's respected as the matriarch. She's the mother. You can't use mother all the time, but you will commonly use mom more than you would mother. Now, the third stage, which is the lowest phase here, this is beta conversation here. This is beta. This is a this is a dude who never grew up yet. I told you, I'm not going to like me talking like this too bad. Y'all clicked on it. <laughs> OK, you didn't know it was going to get like this too bad. <laughs> See, mama is when you haven't grew up yet when you're still holding on her hands and she still needs to put you in her lap and you suckle on her and i'm gonna get to the details in that in just a moment why i say that and i'll tell you what my studies are because i'm gonna bring in the woman with this one i'm gonna bring her into the room in just a few minutes on this one when you're 12 years old you may say mama when you're eight years old you may very well say mama and not think about it a 12 year old may have a difficulty saying mother but they will commonly say mom mom i'm doing my homework mom can you cook for me mom is the food ready even eight 16 year old girls may say that or 16 year old boys or 19 my mom's in the kitchen right now or my mother is asleep you got it but when you're stating as mama you haven't grew up yet you still don't know how to hold your own you're not a man yet men men grow up from those phases you don't talk like you used to when you was a child you don't approach your adult uh, parents as you once did when you was five years old in school and you always ran to them to their knees or to their hips and you yell out their name daddy or mommy you don't do that anymore when you when you advance when you when you're ready to hold your own and deal with the universe and interface with the components of your own universe and you're carving your own path as a man as you should i can't tell you what to do whatever your desires is is on you but i'm pretty sure as a man men typically have the ambition to carve their own path in life so your languages is going to be different. Your approach and your logic is going to have a a uh, it's going to have a transformed interface with your outside world. And the dynamic is going to affect your curriculums and your hindsight and your foresight. So therefore, you are automatically internally, if you utilize your logic you should automatically evolve one way or the other and and glimpse glimpse your language glimpse your your stance how you stand how you walk how you think you're going to evaluate yourself and automatically going to change you're no longer that little boy needing mama's help or calling mama in the middle of the hallway as if you're still this little bitty boy crying for help you got me so mama is beta blue pill conversation that's distinct for idea of bait that's 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 him saying this is what i am this is my language just like just like a child children you can you know a child's conversation by the way that they talk by their lignity the language that they use and how they put it together because there's no thought behind it a man think about what he's going to say before it comes out of his mouth He's going to calculate his decision and his results, and it's going to depict who he is within himself. If you listen to the conversation of some red pill men or some alphas or just regular masculine men on a YouTube and even women, women as well. Yes, the lovely women. Just listen to them within the confines and the context of their conversation. They're telling you exactly who they are, but they are coloring it with the usage of the words. So therefore you have a clear idea of where this girl is coming from and she makes it distinguished, it's distinguished, right? 
from illusion. That's the same as you sitting here saying that you are a man, but you still calling your mother mama like you are a nine year old boy. Perhaps you are. Now, let's bring in the woman with this one. Let's talk about the woman for the minute for a moment here. It's so different with them. But since you want to be blue pill beta, OK, let me let me show you just how low level that is for a supposed to be man. Right. That you you haven't grew up yet. <laughs> See, for 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 a woman, OK, for a girl, there's the levels as well. There is father. There is dad. Then there is daddy. You see that? <laughs> there's father. There's dad. Then there's daddy. Father again is respectable. This is this uh, patriarchal guy. This is the man of the house. This is my father. It has a respectful ring to it, where she's holding her own. You know, she grew up. She's she's uh, she's her own major. You know, she got her own. She's providing for herself. So she would say, father. My father's at home. This is my father. No matter what the relationship may be between him and her, it's still a respectable standpoint where she doesn't, she's not the little girl anymore. She's a grown woman. She's a grown lady. She can walk around talking about this is my daddy. What the hell? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Tell me, this is my daddy. This daddy. Like, did you grow up yet? Oh, I'm 42 years old, but I'm still a little child. I call my father daddy. But we're going to get to that in a moment because I'm going to go deeper than that. I'm going to take this all the way. Do I'm going to take, <laughs> take this all the way to the abyss. Just bear with me for a second here. OK, so again, just like mom, the common would be dad. Usually, usually this that's my dad. My dad pulled up out of front of the store. I got to go see my dad. I got to go visit my dad's uh, 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 group meeting. Pick him up. My dad called me a few minutes ago. No, it's, I had to go see my dad this weekend. Very common, very simple, neutral. It's a neutral expression of this man who brought you to existence. But yet it's still respectful. You just can't use father all the time. Now let's talk about daddy. It's still daddy. The same thing as mama. It's a childish ring. Like you're still a child. <laughs> like you. Yeah. The expression as well has more of an intimate ring to it where you can be close to your mother and your father, which is fine. But when you say daddy or mommy, you have more of an intimate closeness like you did when you was again, 12 years old and eight years old. And you are supposed to be a grown adult still calling your parents the same thing you did years ago they're still your parents they're still mom and dad that doesn't mean that they have changed because you grew up your mind have changed you are an adult now you don't do what you used to do when you was a child no talk the same way so speaking the same language you did when you was a child only identifies that you haven't evolved mentally Let's go further with this. Let's go further. Let me pull myself in the picture now. Now I'm standing next to the woman now. I'm gonna stand intimately close to her, elbow to elbow. I agree with her on one thing. There are times where if I really love my chick, right? She don't have to have a child. It's not about having a child. There are some times I say, oh, my little hot mommy, my little hot mama. Oh, you a hot mama, you a hot little thing, aren't you? Or I can get even more. I ain't going to do that on YouTube. I can get even more sicker than that. Not not comparing her to my mother, calling her hot mama because of her fertility, because of her capabilities. And perhaps one day she is going to be a mother, but she's not going to be my mother. So it's a distinct it's a it's a kinky distinguished it, it, difference between herself and my actual physical a biological mother or mom so if I sit here and call my mother mama okay are you getting the picture here then I'm sick something's wrong with my mind something is twi that means I've been raised by this mother my whole life 
so intimate where I haven't grew up. I, I have to depend on this woman all the time. I need her advice. And I don't know the difference between being a boy and a man. So the body may grow, but the mind is still the same. Calling her mama. What the hell's wrong with me? I kick myself in the ass all the way through Sunday. Say some dumb like that. And I'm supposed to be a red pill man. A man. Or call your mother mama. Boy, something wrong with you? Apparently it is. So standing next to the female that I'm with now. Same thing. Check this out. Usually over time, and it's also kinky for her as well. I can agree with her calling her men daddy sometimes. It's a kinky ring, especially in the donkey dunk. If you're in the bedroom, you say all kinds of crazy stuff that just comes out of your mouth. If it's good enough, you're going to come up with all types of scenarios. And when you start speaking mama, hot mama or daddy, you're not saying that they are your biological father or your mom. You need to be in the psyche. You need to be in it. <laughs> I will introduce you to several doctors that would need to put you under for a little while. OK, and send you away in a white van in a straight jacket because you are a problem for the society and the development of the human race going forward. If you think sick like that, I don't promote that type of attitude. If you want to think that he or she is your parent and you doing them like that. You need help, okay? You need serious help, and I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm gonna tell the doctor to keep you, lock you up, and never let you get out until you change your language. So she will call the man on the often for the sake of love, kindness, and intimacy, daddy, because some men like to hear that. Some men feel comfortable when his girl is calling him daddy. As a matter of fact, it makes him feel more of a man. This girl sitting on his lap. Hey, daddy, how you doing, baby? Oh, daddy, daddy, this. Oh, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know, oh, 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 wait, slow down. Oh, oh, slow down. Are you going to make me come too soon? Wait, look. <laughs> so you don't you don't do that. There's there's a there is a there's a wall in between what you say and who you are as an individual and in your mind as an adult you keep those separate because your father and your mom is the respectable uh matriarch and patriarch of your life or the beginning phase of your existence and they have their own parameter and circle same as the men and the women that you are with there's oftentimes in some hoods some neighborhoods and some cultures you hear you hear them say that all the time. Oh, look at that hot mama. If the girl has a baby or if she don't say, oh, look at that little hot mama. He's not referring to her as his mom. He's trying to he's just basically saying this girl is decent. This girl's cute. She has the ability. She's she's packing. Right. She's attractive. She is. She has the she has the ability to excite him and be an asset or an important asset or value in his life. The same as a woman. Oh, this is my daddy. It it has a ring to it. I've had experiences like that on several occasions. And it was a, a matter of a few months. Not even it wasn't even a good six months being with this girl. And because she appreciated my uh, she respected me because she loved the way that I lead. OK. And uh, she walked bow legged when it's all said and done. <laughs> and cross-eyed and hair all over the place and steaming right so she becomes completely fulfilled and comfortable to the point where she's like oh morpheus daddy how you doing daddy i love you daddy what you need today daddy even in public and other grown women <laughs> i never forget i ain't gonna tell you no personal stories because i never forget just some crazy stuff Especially to, especially her friends be like, you calling this guy daddy? Are you something wrong with you? But no, something's wrong with you and your loyalty. I love this man that much. He earned it. This is the man in my life. But I want to call him daddy. That's how I feel about him. On multiple levels. She's not saying, I see, the perception of people is that they intermingle, the, they intermingle daddy with father. 
because they have they never grew up they never matured they never got to the point where they can distinguish the different factors and most times here we go I told you we're gonna go to the rabbit hole tonight the problem is they can never get over whatever problems are whatever connections that they've had with their mommy and their daddy their actual physical uh, mother and father let me let me erase daddy and mom uh, uh, mommy and daddy they could not they did not break or diminish the ties between their father and their mother that's why when they get confused saying oh my mother is my mama and here, here they are 30 years old still calling this woman mama okay they have unfinished business with their actual mother or same as the guy he has unfinished business with his mother which tells you specifically and psychologically internally this dude never grew up he's still a boy in a man's body calling his mother mama can't think about getting outside the box and changing his language nor interfacing with reality with a different viewpoint he's enabling himself to do so so therefore it's easy when you are standing back and you hear these people oh that's my mama turn looking at the how old are you <laughs> oh I'm, I'm i'm 25 you still calling her mama don't leave the house you ain't ready yet don't get married don't shack up with anybody as a matter of fact you need to do some self-reflection of yourself going forward because if you decide to get into a relationship with somebody what happens is they're going to bring in the problems and the expectations that their mother and their father brought into their life, into your relationship. Did you hear what I just said? They're going to bring the expectations of their father and their mother into your relationship because they never had the ability to solve their unfinished business between them since there was a child so therefore because they haven't grown they haven't grew up they don't know the distinct the distinct factors or the differences between their mindset as a 12 year old versus a 21 year old and and above you have this girl giving you all types of ultimatums and standards based on what her dad said or you have this guy having unrealistic ideas, functions, and soft-handed, womanized, cake retard abilities and mindsets, blue pill functionalities and weakness based on what his mother have installed within his little bitty mind in his big body. So therefore, his standards will be based on what his mother gave to him or what her father gave because they they haven't grew up they haven't grown up they didn't cut the umbilical cord yet you get that they haven't cut it so therefore their language tells you exactly what they are they are not ready yet they have not grown yet and they have not gone back to the past or at least with themselves to solve their mental problem that this is the thing that they say they have not healed their inner demons they have not they, they have not concluded their relationship with their mother and their father so they still have this 10 year old childish mindset and they use that lens like a microscope to perceive the world with all its images its information and facts and logic okay based on the programming of that unfinished business so what comes out of their mouth is exactly what they are blue peel beta now another obvious word that's used for an individual who's either blue pill or for men the blue pill beta is I feel like and the conversations start with I feel like that tells you distinctly realistically and as a matter of fact that this person isn't coming from a realm of knowledge nor logic they're coming from emotions they're coming from the rhythm of the energy that is being given to them 
by that either particular situation, that subject, or from the outside environment. No conversation should ever start with, I feel, unless you are coming from an emotional standpoint of view, such as somebody hurt your feelings, somebody stepped on your toe, you feel sad, you feel sick, you feel like you have a headache. These are emotional ideas. Or you can say, I feel happy or I feel angry at a particular situation or a person. That's when you use I feel. You don't use I feel in a negotiation or a debate or a discussion that has anything to do with a what you would say a one on one conversation with facts over feelings. When you add your feelings to it, it's no longer facts. It's a mindless situation and a description based on a person who really don't know what they're saying and they come up from the wrong avenue. So therefore, when I deal with people like that, I don't listen to them. The conversation is over. And these two descriptive words such as I feel and how they describe their, uh, their parents, usually it's easily identifiable by their life habit their situation, how they handle their finances, and the choices that they make according to relationships. You see what I mean? It's not just saying the word, it's being active with it as well. In my experience, that has been particularly the case. But of course, as you know, there's always exceptions to the rule in this. And pretty much, pretty much everything, there's an exception to the rule. All right. But the majority of the situation, the majority of them is just about what it is. So language comes along with them expressing exactly who they are. It's a form of expressing what's within themselves. And they try to convey their ideas or their, their particular point of views with you or others. Now, number three, it's a very interesting thing. Of course, as I said before, it's going to make some people uncomfortable, but you know me by now not concerned about how you feel it's all about getting to the facts when it's i believe the word believe and faith okay are faithful and hope but i'm gonna get down to that in a minute to the rest of them i'm just i'm bundling them, them up into one all right so realistically the third one which is i believe has been used by the church and chopped up, manipulated, um, doused and submerged in too many deceptive definitions and ideas based on their biblical text. So as a person of knowledge myself and of advancement and growing, I completely wash that away from my vocabulary. And I do my best not to use it in any sort of conversation because you don't come from a point of view where you have to believe in something. If you have to believe, that means you don't know. It's not about you not you, you believing. I believe. I'm just going to let it be. I'm just going to accept what the person tell me. I'm going to accept what the situation is. It's never a I believe. If you believe, that's your choice. It's your choice to just jump out there and and have a uh, a sort of a sort of net where you accept anything comes your way. In my world, I have learned to say, I know or I am sure about what I am saying. Never to the point where I am discussing a matter or a debate and I'm saying, I believe. If I say I believe, then I'm no longer alpha, no longer red pill. I can no longer feel comfortable even being a masculine male. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm particularly womanized. I'm sitting there with my legs crossed with lipstick on and a long dress. What an ugly sight. I don't need to believe in something that I know in. Did you hear what I said? I don't need to believe in something that I know in. I know what I'm talking about. And I am certain or I'll use the word I'm sure, not I believe. That's a program that has been disconnected from the back of my neck a long time ago. Neo. There's a reason why my name is Morpheus, or at least called Morpheus. Fourth word is have faith. I just discussed that just a moment ago. 
Another thing that's been overused, have faith. Have faith in this, just have faith. Have faith in God. Just have faith that tomorrow's gonna be okay. Just have faith. It's almost equivalent to hope. It's almost the same thing. It's not the same thing, but it is almost the same thing. And people utilize them the same. Have faith, or I have hope in. Hope and faith, I have faith in something. As a, as a man, as a masculine male, okay? Faith isn't anything that I use as well the same as belief because it's been utilized and manipulated by the church and it's not about having faith in something. You, you understand? It's about being positive. It's what I would use. That's the word. Or I'm positive. I'm rather positive about the situation. Or I'm positive. I'm positive. Uh, I look forward to a positive result. I'm looking forward to a positive outcome from this girl that I'm with. I'm positive about her. I'm sure she has the ability to excel. I'm looking forward to her uh, her outstanding performance. I'm looking forward to her smarts. I'm looking forward to her virtue. I'm looking forward to her diligence and her honor that she can possibly display in our relationship. Not have faith. Faith in what? The, the first thing that I have learned to be the man that I have become to be today, and that is to unprogram my programming starting with language starting with what people said a word mean based on their reality so i have learned to rewrite my own reality whether a person agrees with it or not i don't give a damn it don't mean anything to me because what i accepted to be and what i overstand it to be is based on my reality therefore i am portraying to be the man that i know that i am i'm portraying to be this real dude that you or anyone else can particularly and realistically rely on because what i say is what i am there was an expression many years ago and it's still it's still the same today it said a man is his word a word is his man and the man sticks by his word therefore words is something i am very careful about speaking or saying certain words i just don't use and at the same time it depicts the distinct factor once again between the boys and the men are the common person and an advanced type of person this person who's a blue pill mind who don't mind being a programmed automaton a puppet like sheep looking individual who claims to be an individual, claims to be awoke, claim to be conscious, but yet they agree with the construct. They agree with the society's norms, their uh, their language, their lignity, and the usage of their so-called definitions, which is programmed by the masses or for the masses to be a hub like mine or a low frequency, low profile sort of human being. I'd rather not be that and excel above and be my own. If I have to rewrite my own dictionary, I'll do that just for myself so I can be real through and through. You may not be or other people may not see this to be an important factor. But for me, as one who has been through it and comprehend that the horizon is difficult and that's the reality of the horizon is difficult. It's easy to be lackluster. It's easy to be lazy and go along with the program. It's real easy to just let everything come to you. But it's difficult when you are the driver of your own life. It's difficult when you are even today in this, in this modern world to be a masculine male. It's difficult because you have to carve a surreal path. You have to carve a place for yourself and accept the scrutiny, accept being the outcast except being the black sheep of the herd except um being on your own and striving to maintain the best that you can ever be without being dragged down into the common rabble and should you decide to think for yourself you're considered as somebody who thinks of yourself as special or you're trying to pretend to be this macho man or um um that you not bougie because you don't you can't use bougie in this situation because it's not about what you buy and how you your lifestyle and your dress code or anything like that it's based on how you carry yourself so a lot of people specifically would not understand you because you don't think like them and oftentimes the common low frequency sort of human being they usually like to destroy what they don't understand or separate themselves from it instead of trying to learn what that individual or what that energy is coming from which could possibly deliver them 
so it will easily identify if that if they're not willing to understand that they themselves is a lower species a higher a higher minded individual is always willing to understand not run from it or be afraid but understand where it's coming from to see it through whereas it might be beneficial for themselves to see things differently which of course of course that entails in the wake of being an adult and, evol and, and evolving meaning having the ability to learn or willing to learn things that you have probably never heard of before because you are seeking to advance yourself that's the point of being an adult and sometimes you simply have to walk it alone so what I would usually do I already told you be positive or I'm positive about so the fifth one is the same thing instead of saying have faith you'll say faithful I'm faithful I'm being faithful or she's being faithful what I equate this to in my language since I don't use it and it's not in my vocabulary I usually say I trust which goes directly to the core it goes directly to the facts not beating around the bush where I'm being faithful I'm faithful to the three I'm faithful not me in my world absolutely not not Morpheus not red pill Morpheus I don't sit here and linger on the fence of oh I'm faithful I have faith in this situation no either I trust you or I don't trust you either you're gonna be honorable where this trust is valid meaning you earned it you did what was necessary to earn my trust or I don't trust you I'm sitting well I'm not gonna sit up and say well she's not being faithful she's not being faithful I'm being faithful of the situation to me that just sounds too soft it sounds too weak and you need to go find your man card somewhere that's a dictionary that's for children not over here well at least not for me if you use it that's up to you I'm faithful I'm faithful that I'm gonna succeed it's like you're hoping for something it's almost like you're just sitting there with your with your your thumbs twirling hoping for something to come your way <laughs> like absolutely not absolutely not no way life gives you a shovel a pickaxe and a, a, a steel rod and a couple of materials you better find your way instead of sitting i'm being faithful faith my ass either i trust you or i don't trust you or get the hell out simple as that i don't play no beat around the bush game not here i'm this dude for a reason i don't jump off my square for you or nobody else if you get straight or get bent the hell out and get out of my face simple as that next thing i hope i hope i hope I hope, I hope, I hope, hope is, <laughs> oh my God, I have to be very careful with this thing because it can really set me off real easy. It's the same thing. You sitting there twirling your thumb. Here you are, this man, but you a little bitty girl and you twirl on them hoping for something, hoping for the right woman to come your way. I'm hoping that tomorrow is going to be better. I'm hoping. I hope that God's going to bless me. I hope that he's going to make the way my way. Here we go. Ralph the dog. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Put me on a leash. I'm going to stand right here in my doghouse. I hope my master come and take me for a walk. I hope it. Dodo bird. Dodo bird sitting there on the perch here in the academy. Sitting there. Oh, do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I hope. Again, another thing that I take to the bathroom and I flush it and you'll never see it again and you'll never think about it. The color, the smell, whatever it was, it's gone. It's no longer there. At least it better not be there. I hope. The word is I expect, not hope. Hope for what? Hope never comes. If you're hoping for it, it'll never come. It's I expect when that expectation isn't met you keep it moving again it's another word used as a kindergarten that's something I used when I was in first grade I hope oh I hope I get an A on this I studied hard enough I hope I hope I got it right I hope the mathematics is correct today as a grown man the word is I expect 
And if it's not going to line up to the program, I'm going to at least make it happen. Or if it doesn't function and if it is inaccurate, that'll let me know exactly what it is. Hope is not a necessity in the vocabulary. It is another trigger word, another uh, very obvious volume of noise in my ear to let me know I don't need to continue my conversation with this person. And you'll say, okay, how, how can you do this, Morpheus? What is your, what is, what is, <laughs> say, this ain't practical, man. Like, what, what's your ideal on this? Now, how can you, how can you say this, Morpheus? There's so many people that I know that's professors and they're doctors and they're, they're, they're ministers. They're smart people. Even some red pill men use this. You forgot what I said in the beginning. I said, there is a few people who use it, but they use it in a certain context as to learning and to convey into the lower frequency or species type human individual. You got it. But yet, just because they're in a professional realm, just because they're your ministers or your masters are the ones who put the lease around your throat and tell you to follow them. Just because they have a couple of stacks per year, that doesn't mean that they can't be blue pill or beta in their programming because it spans all the way across the country being a blue pill beta is not bias it's not judgmental it don't care about what culture or color you are it is a programming that's implemented by birth when you was brought into existence so shut that noise down take that to somebody else who cares about your feelings i don't this is all about facts if you don't want to wipe it away from your dictionary, that's up to you. It's your language. It's your choice. I'm here to teach you and you listening to the to the <laughs> to the to the environment provider <laughs> Morpheus in the Academy of Wow Men. That's what I give. I give wow. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Somebody can pat you on the shoulder and make you feel good. I'm not interested in that. I'm not your boyfriend. No, I'm not your girlfriend. <laughs> Get real. And here's one of the last ones that uh, it's the seventh. People aren't going to like this, but you know what? That's what I do. It's a common thing. All right. And again, it's used even more broader. This is why it's the last one. This word called cheating. Let's do a little history. When I was, uh, when I was in grade school, I used to hear cheating a lot from uh, some of the girls who got a little nosy in their mom's business. And I used to see it on soap operas a lot. There was a uh, there were shows that was all called Days of Our Lives and <laughs> all in the family um, as the world turns. And and every now and then they use the word, oh, he's cheating or this person's cheating. And at the time, I was playing like um, Nintendo every now and then. And uh, what I've learned was cheating is trying to get ahead in the game the wrong way, where you're you are uh, manipulating, you are you're manipulating the scene so you can win or take advantage of the person that you're with, right? Like a video game. And there there was some games that they made that were kind of like cheating games that would beat you off of some strange computer algorithm but it had nothing to do with skill even though you was a good player or maybe your component sit next to you they'll cheat you they'll cheat you out of your game they'll try to manipulate you distract you or something like that or push your controller or uh, start the game before you and so when I heard this from the environment the outside world I never could I never could understand it and I'm, I'm guilty of it myself so I'm not pointing my finger when it comes to this one. This is very broad. It's a very broad spectrum. Most people use it. Practically everywhere you go. Cheating. Cheat, cheat, cheat. That's all you ever hear. Oh, she's cheating. Don't cheat. Cheating is bad. Oh, he's cheating. Oh, you know, the reason why she's cheating on you. I've said that a couple of times. About wives and girlfriends. who want to jump on the fence and, and get along with Morpheus. And she, she's already she's already taken. She don't care. So I, I would usually say cheating. So I'm correcting myself as well. 
So I can never get over the idea that cheating equates to game. It, it, it equates to trying to get ahead on someone as far as video game is concerned because of my experience. So as an adult today, I use this as another form of a programming because as adults, the word cheating is almost like you're sitting here playing a game on each other. Of course, it does equate or is equivalent to trying to get over on the next person. That's the whole thing. But cheating isn't necessarily the word that I'm I'm equipped to use or I'm interested to use based on its history and exactly what it is. Because we always have this thing called running game on your partner or um, it's all about the game or don't hate the game. Don't hate the player, hate the game sort of thing. And you got to be hip to the game, man. It's what time of day it is, man. It's a game. They run a game on you. They run a game on you. So as I grew up, I started thinking, dang, everybody's a bunch of children. <laughs> like, we, we're a bunch of kids. We're adults, but we, we're kids talking like we're playing Atari or something like that or Sega Genesis all over again or Nintendo or uh, uh, Nintendo 64. Yeah, those old systems. I'm not that old. I'm just giving you examples of how far back. We start using these words, but it's been years. So I consider my vocabulary as well to switch. Perhaps in my teaching, I'm going to start changing from cheating to something else will be better, like dishonorable will be better or untrue. That will be more suitable to get away from the programming and to distinguish yourself different than the herd of people who just talk just to be talking. And yes, we comprehend that as a teacher, because I'm a teacher myself, I mean, duh, you're here in my academy, okay? So um, when, you need, when you need to convey to anyone, you do want to speak a language that they can understand and that they can relate to. If I just throw around all the time, dishonorable, she's being dishonorable. Sometimes it doesn't give that hook of a common person or an 18-year-old or 17-year-old will comprehend. But if it's a common word that most people expect, such as cheating, now the cheating like rings a bell, like, oh, I know what you mean about that. Oh, she's, yeah, I know what you mean. She's being unfaithful, you would say, when you was expecting for her to do right. <laughs> you believed her to be, you believed her to be virtuous and, and decent for you. And you had a lot of hope in it. But unfortunately, she broke your hope by cheating on you. <laughs> You was too faithful in the situation, but she deceived you altogether. So she ended up cheating on you. You see, I put all that together in one time in one conversation that can easily be broadcast by one person to the next. It's so easy. It's just like you just talking to that person. Common words, right? But I think that if we switch what we say and we are genuine with our words and we are able to distinguish ourselves from the common rabble, from the common low-minded, uh, low-frequency, sort of degraded human being or person, we may have a better spectrum and ability of being able to filter out others or even ourselves should we catch ourselves slipping and falling into the programming. This is another angle to stare at the world and see what it has done to us or our environment because depending on what side of town you on, what country, what city you grew up with there's a difference of language it's a different how you how you speak and how you encounter each other so it may not be these specific words that you use but there may be some other words that everybody commonly use and you use it so frequently and so easy and don't do not analyze what you're talking about or what you're saying so what ends up happening is these various people are myself and others would consider be a different person but we're all talking the same but we have a different perspective of life our perception our goal plan but if you really want to stand out or find somebody who is an overachiever or just a person who isn't about all that and they are truly red pill or awoke as what we like to say are conscious check their words out their words would tell you exactly who they are and what they're all about and most times it's going to be different. It's going to have a different development. It's going to provide you with another means of a highlight into um, an understanding. You got it? 
too many people expose themselves on social media or some females they talk about they will comment on uh, a man's channel or they will comment about uh, whatever the relationship dynamic is between man and woman in the way that they comment if you listen to their words when they start with i feel i believe i hope he was being faithless he was cheating on me and you hear that over and over again not only her listen carefully not only her but the, uh, the the thousands of others that you may encounter and you put the pattern together you'll be like wait a minute this girl talks just the same as the other girl but yet both of them saying that they're different oh i never do that but she's saying the same thing the other girl is doing sometimes y'all able to pick up on that and i read it on your comment boxes you know some of the red pill men who be, who uh who teaches me or try to provide me with the means of success and moving forward as well. I hear when other women are trying to comment at film or they don't like what the teacher is saying. They don't understand what the red pill man is saying. And they say, well, I, well, that girl may be doing that, but I'll never do that. That just sounds crazy that girls would do something like that. But yet when you hear her conversation on a one-on-one, -on -one, a personal, she speaks no different than the other women. So it's a wolf in sheep's clothing Whereas if you can identify the speech when you first encounter them and hear what they say, you may be able to get somewhere. Now, I'm not saying judge a person by what they say. You do have to comprehend what they do. What they do is what's most important than what they say. But it's a good sign. It's a good sign to know the difference between an, a, uh, a, a blue pill beta or a beta speech, a beta man versus a real masculine man. Masculine men don't need to be hopeful. He ain't gonna sit up there and have faith. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hope that it's gonna happen. No, he makes something happen. Hoping for what? Oh, I have faith in her. I just believe that she's gonna, I believe she's gonna do that. Believe she's gonna, no, 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 no. Nah, ah, nah. It's no, 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 no. Either, either I know or I don't know. If I don't know, be expecting the unexpected and most times as we all know the unexpected is harsh but if you know by vetting them out getting a chance to know them filter it out and having a conversation with you know what you need to know about them or all that you are capable of at that particular moment what do you believe in it's a waste of word a waste of energy and a waste of time you just telling on yourself and Contrary to maybe your experience, my experiences have been when I come across people who use these various words, cheating is neither here or there. Just depends on how you're using it, how frequent, but it still needs to be analyzed. It's still something that you can possibly change in your vocabulary. When we're discussing the dishonorable um, abilities or the dishonorable behaviors and choices that your companions make. You understand? But these particular languages is something that will open up your world just a little bit more and to give you an hindsight of how you can approach these people and start the discussion because oftentimes I have found in my personal world in my experience again contrary to yours that has been a fact once I spend time with them I see where they live at the boy is living in her in his mom's house <laughs> the guy's talking about oh my mama I'm like dude how old are you oh I'm 35 years old why are you calling your mother mama this is what i do man that's my mama man don't talk about my mama i'm like listen i didn't say anything bad about my mama I said about you, my mama your mama i didn't say anything bad about it. i'm just asking you why are you calling her mama that's what you do when you six years old dude aren't you a grown man yeah, this was man she's just my mother man this is for the color I'm like, okay all right you know do what you do it's your business then when I hang out with this blue pill beta looking all bogey, stogey, ugly looking, spelogey looking, let me, don't let me, no, skid row, I don't want to get started. I'm trying to be nice here. I don't even want to drag him through the mud like that. <laughs> I just, I'm, I can cut him a real bad. Morpheus, I listen, if I let my tongue go, I, whoo boy, you, you, you swear you've been ran over by bulldozers. Don't let my tongue get loose. I do my best to hold it back. This a uh, strange ostrich looking dude living in his mom's house still there 
not trying to do anything for himself and making excuses for everyone else lazy as hell have nerve enough to ask me to uh to help them out <laughs> ain't doing nothing for themselves talking about my mommy yeah um, uh, i gotta spend some time with my mommy today my mommy like dude listen this conversation is over because most times i want to be how, how can you put it i expect for adults to act like adults that's what i expect and talk like an adult and so i know we slip up sometimes and some women do that as, as well you know, all the time but <laughs> men slip up sometimes and you just you want to feel close to your parent but that's a little too close and it tells on themselves and when i step back i'm like okay they're just talking that's that's their family this is what they do and then when i sit back and i watch them their mother is controlling their life or it was a single mother home and that's all he knew that's my mama you know she did everything for me i here i am 35 years old i still don't know how to tie my shoe call me stupid and plant me in the sand i don't care what is a man um um i don't know what the man is though which way did he call yours i don't know let me call my mommy every time every second of the day she's always there always got to call her wherever she want to go what she needs at the grocery store right in the middle of his job well i gotta uh, uh mommy needs me to go get something for mommy i'm gonna do it never grow up that is not a man that's a beta that is a the worst version of a beta is a man who never grew up men grow up to detach themselves from their mother or their father's umbilical cord the way you detach yourself from your father's umbilical cord is stop depending on your father for everything so it's not going to be oh my daddy it will be my dad or my father and this dude walking around my daddy my daddy called me hey dude did you is he still trying to help you with your tie how old are you oh i'm 29 years old i still don't know how to wash my car i don't even know how to change my own oil <laughs> god on a 1992 uh chevy i don't know how to change the oil what's that round thing underneath there I'll, 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 let me look it up on youtube now my, my dad said he's gonna come over and show me how to do it <laughs> These, but these are the type of these are the type of people we have today. We have these, and then let's check this out. And then Morpheus is seen as a as a bad guy because I don't want to talk to him because I shun them out because I walk past them and act like they don't exist because they don't exist themselves yet. They don't even exist to themselves. As a matter of fact, they're not grown yet. They're still in their mother's womb talking about my mommy. They're still a daddy's boy or girl talking about well, my daddy my daddy like uh, uh uh we're done you you're not ready you're not ready and you're not bringing your chaos into my world you know the funny thing is and then when i train guys like this i give them an opportunity or a day or a 30 minute session I'm like, okay let's go let's let me have you tag along with me and uh let me show you some things can't even do three or four different push-ups crying off of uh 25 pound dumbbells can't even curl that five for each arm and oh, oh I'm tired, man. <gasps> I'm tired. All right, is that not, is that's not okay. That's not good enough. Get on trail for me for like five minutes. Two minutes pass, and he's in there. Oh, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Let me go back home and play Halo. I need to go back home and play my video game, man. I, I, I can't do it. I never had to do this stuff. I never had to do this stuff. So I'm thinking, OK, what is going on with these strange people who exist now? What other ways can I identify them? They have a language that's easy to find. Soon as I, I feel like I'm like, you know what? I tell you what I feel like. I feel like I don't want to talk to you. So you have a conversation with your own feelings and I'm out. You feel with yourself. If it's a listen, if it's a female, a woman, if she ever sitting there talking about, I feel like the only thing she needs to be feeling. <laughs> no, seriously, 
The only thing she needed to be feeling it was what's going on between me and her in that moment. Not sitting there talking about, well, I feel like my professor said. And I'm like, why are you feeling the professor? Why don't you think about what the professor said? Why don't you come to me about what you know, what you have studied? It will be, I can respect you a little bit more than that. Instead of saying, I feel, say, well, I have studied in college in chapter 12 that the professor said that we are supposed to co <laughs> co have, co have a tape this way and then fix the measuring tape this way and uh, we, be, we'll be, we will be able to get the, uh, <laughs> the, the results. You'll be spinning backwards. Yeah, I know I'm confusing y'all. I'm just making up all kind of dumb stuff. But at least she's not saying, I feel. I will sit there and listen just a little bit longer if it starts off with not, I feel. The last time a dude came to me talking about, man, I feel like, I said, you know what? That's it. Conversation done. Whatever you feeling, dude, this is not the place for you to be feeling. I'm a man. Don't come over here talking about what you feel like. Come over here and talk about what you know or what you think. Or better yet, why don't you say this? This will be better. Well, this has been on my mind and I think, I think that the way to deal with this situation is to take our time and be patient and we'll come up with the idea. That will be much better. Not, I feel. Morpheus, I feel like. So it's the, I feel like, the, oh, you know what? Um, I got a couple of dresses that uh, one of my girls that, you know, left here last night. I'm gonna go ahead and let you wear this stuff. You can go ahead and rip because, you know, whatever you got on right now, dude, that's not you. There's, uh, go ahead and wear a couple, a couple of these dresses. And uh, she left some bras, too. Go ahead and grab this. And uh, you wear the outside the house. Not here. Get out. Get out. Tell me about what you feel. You soft. No softness here in this academy. Do you not speak English? <laughs> So it's easy to identify. And here it is. It's not about judging. I don't need to. Oftentimes I put both hands up, both palms up in the air. And I'm like, you know, I'm walking away. Like when you're giving up and I let it be as it is. And from the birds, the bees and from hanging out with them, I find out that they are living a beta or a blue pill life and they are destructive. So it is utterly important to identify them, not just by the conversation or how you dealing with them, especially by language. That that's one thing that should bring your radar into the scene when they first start having a conversation. That's where your radar should be. And by then you keep one eye open at all times and then you'll find out all oh, this person is soft. This person don't leave themselves. This person is Roth the dog in Morpheus's Academy. Or the dodo bird or the sloth on the outside of his door so I thought this would be humorous and very informative for you because there is plenty of other words you can probably add some yourself because these are just seven I'm just giving you the basic seven I'm pretty sure there are plenty of other words that beta blue pill men use are just blue pill individuals altogether who are not aware nor conscious that they say that they talk about. Someone even said that swirling is the same thing as saying, oh, uh, this individual isn't conscious or aware. Or another, pre uh, there's another thing that they call besides swirling or Oreo. And uh, uh, it used to be jungle fever years ago. I did my study on that, but I'm, I'm going to have to make another audio on that one. OK, because we are judging and we are looking at it from the outside book because we are still in our we're still in our grade school phase when it's not about what it is on the outside. It's about what it is on the inside. And I always say, if you ain't doing it, <laughs> this was the thing. One of these. Uh, there was a black girl who was mad at one of my uh, <laughs> one of my white brothers. And one of my white white brothers hooked up with one of her black sisters or one of her black friends, right? <laughs> right. And she came to me talking about how you gonna let your friend come over here and, and, and just take her like that? Now what now what the hell's wrong with you? Man, how you know, black sisters belong with black men. If he wanna why don't he just go ahead and get a black why don't he just go ahead and get a white girl? Why you gotta go 
that she ain't she, he ain't all that anyway. He ain't gonna he ain't all that anyway. Why don't he just go ahead and get it with black? He she should have hooked up. What? You gonna let that happen? I said, listen. First of all, let's stop the conversation right there because you're looking at it from the outside book. You're looking from the outside book. She's like, what are you talking about? You know, they just swirling. Why just swirling like that? We don't get down like that. What the hell's wrong with them? I'm like, listen. Look at yourself like you are in the room. And let's just say it's all four of us, right? You know, I'm not down with it. I'm not interested in you nor her. So I'm not in it, but I'm still in the room. Okay. And let's say that there are two white girls that was in the room with this white guy. And your black friend was interested in my white brother. Okay. And they already agreed. They're flirting with each other. She's like, oh, he's cute. Look at him. And, and he's you know, giving her signs and everything and having a conversation and she's they feeling each other right but yet he gave that same attention to the two white girls in the room who did nothing but deny him or make it hard for him or difficult for him to get with them because they had certain type of expectations but your black friend didn't she accepted him for who he is so the result is and this is my this is usually my principle when I'm dealing with people and I tell them to their face and it wasn't her, but it would have been the white girls if I was talking to them. The thing is, it's right here. If you ain't doing it. Shut your mouth. The bleep that out. Shut your God loving mouth. If you can't put a smile on his face, if if. If I was talking to a white girl that was ignoring him the whole time, if it was her saying, oh, you shouldn't be with that black guy, that black girl. Why? What are you doing with that black girl? She can't she can't do what I do. Oh, you just won't be with her because she got fat booty. I know what it's like. She can get down like that. So what's wrong with us? You want to go over there and start swirling with her? I will go up to the white girl as well. Be like, listen, if you ain't making this man happy, shut the hell up. Shut your mouth. If you ain't doing it, shut your lip. Put your lip that's on the floor. Crane that thing up to your top lower lip. Your, your top lower lip. And staple it. You ain't got nothing to say. If you ain't providing a means of support for that brother. If you're not the one putting a smile on his face. Or probably even in his heart. If you can go that far. If you're not providing a means of success and a way for him to feel like a man you have no place to judge him about swirling or being with the opposite culture i hate it and it is not in my viscera nor in my classroom ever and it is banished from the academy of wildman to talk about such stupidity because i don't talk about it at all because it's childish I always hear about what culture is dating the other culture. Black women should pl stay with black men. White men should stay with white women. Why are we flipping it? Childish, ridiculous, dumbed down idiots. In its basic form, the fact is, sweetheart, honey, baby, honey with sugar on top, you honey bun cake. You're so sweet and adorable. Let me tell you very easy once again so you can hear me. If you ain't doing it, shut the goddamn hell up. Shut up. Most times men make decisions because there is no other option. And they make the most logical most rational most sensible decision that's going to be most beneficial for himself and sorry sweetheart that have nothing to do with what color you are or what culture that you come from because your stars aren't always going to be in the same sky your miracle isn't always going to come from the places that you pray at usually it's going to come from a different angle that is least expected and most rejected so shut your mouth and keep your narrow moving
That's a done deal. Don't like to talk about this stuff. This is not in this classroom and it's unacceptable. It's swirling. What, what are you talking about swirling? What the? Are we kids all over again? Oh, he's swirling. What do you think this person is swirling? Oh, I can't believe it. This white girl's with this black guy. This white guy is with this black girl. I don't understand it. And y'all be the very ones rejecting them. Let that white guy come up to you. You be the first one talking about, no, I'm not interested in you. But yet, as soon as you go find somebody else, you want to say, oh, he's swelling. Let some black guys, black, definitely black men, definitely black men. Let them do that. He's sitting there talking about, okay, baby, let me take her out. Let me do this. You know, I'll take care of you. You know, that's what's up with Tom and Dave. No, I can't be with you. I have standards. I have very, very unrealistic high standards. I don't want to be with you till I'm 45 years old, useless and a leftover. So just wait for me. Give me about um, three years and I'll be back. And the black guy's like, oh, yeah, you know what? I ain't waiting for you. Um, I got quality and I got I got you know what I got options you go ahead and do your thing and you turn it to uh, <laughs> a Rusty's on uh, what do you call that Lightning McQueen that that truck you go ahead and turn it to Rusty's and uh, I'm gonna lightning my way out of here and I'm gonna find somebody else so the black man will go find somebody like Portia who's so happened to be white or Mexican or Latina and the first thing you want to do is, oh, I can't believe he's over there with that white girl. How is he going to do that? He's abandoning us black women. I can't believe he's doing that. How can we've been diligent and faithful with these black men for a long time? He's going to up and leave me. But yet you be the first. You just reject him. You are the first one to reject him. And not only just reject him, reject him with the attitude. Then he goes somewhere with Portia, who doesn't give him attitude and acts like a feminine woman. Now you want to judge him and talk about, oh, he's Oreoing, he's swirling. Swirl yourself back to church and shut your mouth. Swirl yourself to a different planet with your logic, your illogical emotional self. Every person has the obligation to their heart, their mind, and their spirit to pursue their happiness and their freedom. And however they pursue their happiness and their freedom is none of your goddamn business.